You may learn a few things that you didn't know about Lysol, today on Antique Bottle Stories. For this story, we need three backstories. First is Gustav Rappenstrach. I probably totally messed that up. He was born in 1859 in Romania. Gustav was a pharmacist. Among other things, he developed Lysol in 1889 when he was about 30. For this, he used raw carbolic acid, which we learned about in our Listerine video, It Kills Germs, a mixture of phenol and isometric methylphenols, and combined those with potash soap, which we learned about in our Colgate perfume video. He was able to produce this water-soluble agent which he patented in 1889. In 1890, he moved to a newly formed company in Hamburg, Germany, which focused on the production of this new Lysol. This was used to combat a cholera epidemic that was occurring at the time. Our second backstory is Frederick William Fink, who was born in Kessel, Germany, and immigrated to the United States in 1867. In 1874, he and Louis Lane co-founded the drug firm Lane and Fink. So our third backstory is Louis Lane. I keep wanting to say Lois Lane. He was also born in Germany, and he came over in the 1850s as a teenager. His obituary says that he was one of the wealthiest men in Bond County, Illinois. I don't know if his family already had money when he came over, but apparently he fronted most of the money needed to get the business started. Fink didn't have it. He had the ideas, but Lane had the money. They set up a warehouse in a small loft building at 160 William Street in Lower Manhattan. On May 1st, 1874, the business opened, and for the first six months, Frederick Fink was the only salesman. He hired a few employees as the business grew. Now, Lane and Fink had been in business for about 15 years before Gustav invented his Lysol. The same year he invented the Lysol, Frederick Fink took a trip over to Europe and attended the Paris Expedition. While he was in Europe, he made a few business agreements. One of the most successful agreements was the rights to a new water-soluble disinfectant called Lysol. Once back home, Lane and Fink began by importing Lysol in 100 and 500 gram bottles from Hamburg but as sales increased, they began buying it by the barrel and bottling it themselves. So around the 20 year mark in 1886, Louis Lane retired and about 12 years later in 1898, Frederick Fink retired. When they retired, they sold their shares of the company to two brothers, Albert and Joseph Plout, who were employees. They now had control over the business. Albert was elected president. Around this time, the company was at 128 William Street, New York, and they were making about a half a million a year by now. It burned down in January 1901 and was rebuilt. More space was needed by this point, so a new plant was built in Brooklyn, New York. It was also this year that Lane and Fink bought Heinz Honey and Almond Cream, which we talked about in the Heinz Almond Cream video. In 1908, Louis Lane died at age 75. Fun fact, in 1911, poisoning by drinking Lysol was the most common means of suicide in Australia and New York. Okay, okay, it wasn't a fun fact. By 1912, Lane and Fink negotiates the licensing agreements to begin manufacturing their own Lysol in the United States. They used to only sell it to physicians, but after they started manufacturing Lysol themselves, they began selling Lysol as a general household disinfectant. Business boomed once they began advertising it as a way to protect against the 1918 Spanish flu pandemic. Newspaper advertisements provided tips for preventing the spread of the disease, including washing sick rooms with Lysol, as well as everything that came in contact with patients. A small 50 cent bottle made five US gallons of disinfectant solution, and a smaller 25 cent bottle made about two gallons. Albert Plout, who is the president of the company, 
unexpectedly died in 1915. His brother Joseph is now president of the company. In 1920, Lane and Fink relocate to a new 170,000 square foot, seven story tall headquarters at Greenwich and Morton Street in New York. Joseph Plout's son, Dr. Edward Plout, joins the company and continues research on the products. Then he became president in 1921. In 1924, William Fink died at age 78. In early 1925, the company opens a new factory in Bloomfield, New Jersey at 192 Bloomfield Avenue. They have many products in their product line at this point. By 1926, Lane and Fink bought out all the companies in Europe that were producing Lysol. In the late 1920s, Lysol begins to aggressively market towards women as a feminine hygiene product. Women were instructed to dilute the Lysol disinfectant solution to about 1% concentration and use it regularly to maintain freshness and stave off infections. They even went as far as to say women needed to use this in order to keep their men, making them self-conscious about smells and freshness. Here's a snippet of this ad. Please, Dave, don't let me be locked out from you. It goes on to say, a married man marries a woman because he loves her. So instead of blaming him if married love begins to cool, she should question herself. Is she truly trying to keep her husband and herself eager, happy, married lovers? It basically says the most effective way to safeguard her dainty feminine allure is by using Lysol for feminine hygiene to keep fresh and destroy germs. Here's another one. She was a jewel of a wife with just one flaw. She was guilty of the one neglect that mars many marriages. By the way, this was also secretly used as a method of birth control. So Lysol and Listerine perfected the advertising market, making women think that they have all these problems that they didn't have, preying on our insecurities to make a buck. Apparently, the Smithsonian Institute in 2013 included the Lysol feminine hygiene ads, among others, which were, quote, hilarious and shocking in hindsight. Here's one more. Still the girl he married. Jeez. Skip ahead to 1962 when Lysol released the new aerosol Lysol disinfectant spray. Here's a commercial. Now, at the touch of your fingertip, you can help protect your home from household germs and destructive mildew. New Lysol Spray Disinfectant, the pleasant way to eliminate germs, mildew, and the odors they cause, even in spotless homes. In the shower, for example, new Lysol effectively fights fungus that causes athlete's foot. Spray Lysol wherever germs and odors persist. Bathroom floor, empty laundry hamper. Lysol Spray is safe as your detergent, helps protect against germs in baby's crib. Freshens empty diaper pails. Spray Lysol in the garbage can to control odor. Pet areas. Spray Lysol in closets. Basements, wherever there's destructive mold and mildew. In laboratory tests, Lysol action lasted seven days. Lysol spray refreshes the air with a new clean scent. Get Lysol spray, the fast, easy, effective way to destroy household germs, mildew, fungus, odors instantly. In 1967, Sterling Drug Company acquires Lane & Fink Products Incorporated, which is now owned by GlaxoSmithKline. I have two bottles from around the 20s or 30s. There's no dates on them. I'm surprised they're not in poison bottles since by this time it's known to be harmful if swallowed. They are amber, cork top, and machine made. They both have Lysol written across the shoulders and script and some writing on the bottom that says L&F Products Incorporated, New Jersey Bottle, Made in USA, and it says Bloomfield, New Jersey. Remember the company didn't open the Bloomfield factory until 1925. So this could even date, I guess, into the 40s, but I would imagine by the 40s they would have used screw tops by then. I would say it's probably the smallest size, the 25 cent size, so you would make two gallons out of this bottle. And that's all I've got for today. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.